Hey there, everybody. I am doing some fall Dutch pours today um, with a little extra twist. So a few weeks ago, I tried out an experiment using fall leaves in a fluid painting. I've got these beautiful fall leaves coming down now. Um, and so I did, I made two paintings with them. Turned out great, except that um, I did discover, <laughs> that's why this was a test, um, that even sealing your leaves with an acrylic sealer before putting them in wet paint, they still soak up enough moisture that they will turn brown. So the color of my leaves faded a bit. So I'm doing it again. This time, uh, the painting still turned out looking awesome, but not as good as I wanted. So now I'm doing more. This time I'm going to do the fluid painting and I'm gonna let it dry completely. Then I'm going to take the leaves and just glue them onto the painting and then spray it to finish. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, let's get started. So the colors I have today, I've got white as my base paint. Um, then I've got this light tan beige-ish. It's a house paint that I bought and uh, lightened up a bit. I've got burnt umber with some black, so a very dark brown. Metallic gold, this metallic sort of maroon, which was metallic red mixed with some metallic bronze. Beautiful fall leaf color. I have some harvest orange, some of this warm yellow color, and then some dark antique copper or bronze. So those are my fall colors that I used in the last round and they looked really good. So I'm gonna do them again. All right, white base, gonna cover it all. And then I said this was a Dutch pour, but I'm actually gonna do the, um, the design blowing with my mouth, not with a blow dryer. But I will use a blow dryer to spread the paint out. Okay, so there's my base coat of white, and I'll just torch it really quick to pop the air bubbles. All right, so when I did this last, I did two other sizes. I did a 12 by 24 and a 14 by 14. This is a 16 by 20. Um, and this is an 11 by 14. So um, instead of a tall and skinny and then a square, I'm doing two sort of standard rectangles. So I'm gonna do two bands of color, sort of not a straight line, but sort of a swooping, like flowing pattern. So that ideally I will have sort of a clean corner here and here for putting the leaves into, and also this space in the middle for putting leaves kind of tumbling down. So I'm going to start layering my colors. I'm gonna start with the burnt umber. Then 
I think this tan yellow And I'm trying to stack the colors, but also leave, you know, kind of crisscross them, leave different ones poking out. Because um, I do like having just some solid color in the middle and not all blended. Speaking of solid colors, that's all my solid colors. Now it's just my metallics. Metallic bronze. And maybe I should have put a metallic down in between some of those colors, I'm not sure. And then the red, which I do, it's a good color to be prominent. And finally, a little bit of this gold. Okay, those look nice. So then, like I said, I'm just going to blow them with my mouth because I don't want to get the design all over the negative space. I want to still have clean white in enough to put leaves in. So I'm going to start here and work my way up and then I'll probably flip the canvas around and do that side. Splatter there. Some of these flecks will be covered by the leaves, and some will be covered by, you know, I can touch them up with some more white paint later, but I want to get out the big ones. That's pretty. That's a good start. Just tweaking a bit here and there. The metallic gold and the metallic red turned into this really pretty I'm happy enough that I'm gonna flip it around now. Well, first I'll torch this side, see what comes up. And then I'll flip it around and do the other side. I do like torching. I like having the solid colors, but I also like bringing out some of the detail and breaking up those solid lines. So that turned out nice. Let me flip this around. And blow the other side.
I'm liking it. This side turned out very red, which I like the red. This side turned much more brown and orange. I'm trying to decide if I need to try to bring out some of the other colors. torch this side, see how it looks after that. Okay. I'm happy with that. I like how this side looks. Actually, that's not quite true. I blew too much of it out here. I need to add just a little bit of some of the darker colors and just blow it that way a bit. Just sort of looking at it from the other side. Wow, I did not leave a lot of space here for the leaves to tumble. So it's a pretty pattern. I suppose the leaves could overlap somewhat. That wouldn't be bad. It's harder to do overlapping, you know, leaves on top of a pattern when when you're setting the leaves in the wet paint because you don't know how the paint will shift and there's no way to adjust it afterwards. But since I'm going to be doing this dry, I think I can lay them on top and see how it will work. So I think that'll be okay. My shaping seems to be pretty closely mirrored. I think I'll say that I'm happy with that. Yay! All right, so after this dries, I'll show you the next step, which will be uh, touch-ups if necessary, and then gluing the leaves onto the painting. Hey there, everybody. Look how pretty this leaf painting or this fall painting dried. Now, I've already laid out my fall leaves here. So my leaves I got from my yard. I pressed them in the pages of a book for about a week, a little more than a week. Anyway, the painting is dry. I've laid out the leaves on top. That way I can get everything kind of balanced the way I want it. And now I'm going to glue them on. And hopefully this, um, this is my first time doing it this way, but hopefully gluing them onto a dry painting will mean that they keep their color instead of um, turning brown from the moisture of the wet paint. Anyway, I've got a cup of tea, I've got all my materials, so let's do this. Okay, so I've got this oh, giant jug of Elmer's glue that I bought for testing out different um, pouring mediums. And I've just got a paper plate, and I'm going to pour some glue onto the plate. also have paper towels, of course, for cleaning hands and leaves and anything that gets glued that shouldn't have glue. <laughs> okay, so let's try this. I'm going to start with the leaves that are closest to me so my elbows don't bump them when I'm doing the ones up here. Let's just start with this little one. Here's a piece of scrap paper, so I'm going to put the leaf on the piece of scrap paper. 
I don't want a super, super heavy coat of glue because when you press it down, um, the extra glue will squirt out the sides and then you'll have to clean that up. So you definitely want to get the glue all across the surface and as close to the edges as you can. It dries clear so it doesn't matter if you get rid of it on the edges. And then there on the stem if you can. Okay. And now of course I've forgotten how this was. I think it was like this. Okay. So then I'm just going to gently press. This leaf was perfectly flat, which means it's attaching really easily. It had the perfect amount of glue. It's held in place solidly now. No bubbles of glue squirting out the edges. All right, next leaf. So this one is down sort of at a 45. Paintbrush glue. So the nice thing about um, this glue is it dries much faster than fluid paint, especially if you're painting with um, like with Floetrol and water, like I do this. That's how I do my Dutch pours. Um, Floetrol is great for adding flow, partly because it slows down the drying time of your paint. Um, which means your paint stays liquid longer, so you have more time to work with it. The problem with that is it makes it take a long time to dry. <laughs> but, um, glue dries faster than that, so this should dry completely in an hour or two. I'm still going to let it have another couple of days before I varnish it, but... This is a bigger leaf with more detail, so it takes a little bit longer. I've got a paintbrush that's sort of an angled, flat but angled, which means you can brush with the flat side, but then you can also do details with the pointy tip. There we go. Yep. Angled brush. That works well for this. If you're doing very big leaves, you could use a bigger brush, but I'm not. None of my leaves are huge. Okay, and then the stem here. I'm hoping the stems don't give me too much trouble. The spray varnish will also help sort of stick them on, but I'd like to have them glued on with actual glue. Okay, here we go. like this? No, it was down. So the nice thing about gluing onto dry paint is you can work with it a little bit. <laughs> when sticking something into wet paint, once you get it down in, you can't really change its position at all. So this leaf was slightly more crinkled, I think because I didn't take it out of being pressed today. So it needs just a little bit more glue in a couple of spots. Let me grab a toothpick. I've got a toothpick so that I can poke some glue into this little hole here. Be sure to wipe up the blobs that come out the side. It's more of a texture issue than a color issue since it dries clear, but and there's a little bit of this leaf tip here that's popped up. Just 
holding this down for a minute to see if I can train the leaf to stay down on its own. Um, this stem has also popped up again. And some more blue juice stem. So this corner is still wanting to come up and this stem is wanting to pop up. I'm just gonna move this piece of paper down on the top. I'm gonna stick something on the top. scissors here. It's maybe a little heavy, but let's do this next little red leaf. Again, I've forgotten how this was. I didn't take a picture of it. Okay, we're going to come kind of straight down. I would be looking at my phone for reference, but I'm filming. So I can't do that. Okay, let me pull off these scissors and just see if this leaf has begun to stick. Because the glue starts to set up pretty fast. leaf tip here seems to be good. The stem seems to be good. So that was pretty fast. Excellent. Yeah, so you may need to sort of coax some leaves to stay down um, if they're not perfectly flat to begin with. But if you've got pretty flat leaves, like with these ones, very, very easy. All right, so I'm going to keep... Oops, sorry. I'm going to keep uh, gluing these down, but that's kind of boring to watch, so I won't make you watch it all. But I'm going to glue all these down, and then I'll give you a close-up of how it looks. And here we have the finished, varnished painting. So shiny. I varnished with this Krylon Triple Thick Crystal Clear Glaze. Um, because of the leaves and their three-dimensional uh, nature, I didn't want to brush on a standard varnish. So I do spray varnish for that. But the colors are so vibrant and I love the way it turned out. Yeah, if you use the spray varnish, just follow the directions on the can Put on a nice thick coat and then repeat it after two or three minutes and then let it dry for a full 24 hours. I love how this piece turns out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.